救中救人。Let's get started. Please ask the winners and those accompanying him to join us now. Welcome to the,、um, the meeting of the Select Committee to inquire into the background of and reason for the delay of the construction of Hong Kong section of XRL. This is the fifth meeting. Today we have Mr. Wai Chi Sing, former director of、uh, highways,、uh, as a witness. The committee's committee has agreed that、uh, Mr. Y can be accompanied by some other people, and today we have Mr. Chan Choi Y from the Railway Development Office, and also Ms. Lee Suk Ping, the legal advisor to the Development Bureau. May I remind that、uh, all those、uh, people accompanying Mr. Y may not address the select committee. I would also like to remind the witness that、uh, this、uh, select committee has not been empowered to exercise the power under Section 91 of、uh, Cap 382 Legal Powers and Privileges Ordinance. Therefore, the witness is not covered by the privileges under the Section 9 of、uh, Cap 382. According to Section 18 of the of Cap 382, in respect. Of, Of、uh, material questions, if a deliberate、uh, false answer or the doctored uh, documents uh, is submitted to the select committee, is an offence. I believe uh, the uh, winners will act in a bona fide manner in assisting the work of the select committee. We have come up with our own、uh, practice and procedure. I like to remind、uh, members of the following, and that is.、Uh, The powers and privileges for members under Cap 382、uh, will only apply during the course of the proceedings of this select committee. Outside the select committee, members and、uh, those attending the proceedings should、uh, refrain from disclosing、uh, the, the evidence、uh, given today. And also remind those in the public.、Uh, Gary, that、uh, if you want to refer to the uh, evidence uh, uh, used during the proceedings outside of the、uh, select committee, that they are not covered by the、uh, Cap 382, and they should seek legal advice as to their legal liabilities of doing so. I would like to ask the witness to confirm they adopt the written、uh, statement. As part of the evidence、uh, provided to the select committee, and we have also up, we are going to going to upload、uh, documents that we have agreed to to allow public access to our website. I now call the、uh, hearing to order. Mr. Y, on the eighth of May, twenty fifteen, you provide a written statement in Chinese and English to the secretary of the select committee, and that is、uh, paper number W six bracket C. Do you wish to the, you are now the, do you wish to produce that to the select committee as、uh, your evidence? Yes, I do, to facilitate the、uh, those in the public gallery and the media to follow the proceedings. I would、uh, at on the at the request、uh, make your written statement public. Do you have, want to supplement anything anything to the written to your written statement? I have no verbal supplement at this stage. In the past two weeks, I suffer from uh, some. Uh, Bronchitis problems, so I uh, uh, ask you for your forgiveness if my voice is not that clear. Well, so far so good. Maybe、uh, it's been suggested that you may wish to speak closer to the mic. Members, in accordance with our practice and procedure, paragraph fifteen during open hearings. 
members uh, may should only ask questions for the purpose of ascertaining facts relevant to the inquiry. Uh, members should not make comments or statements during these hearings. I would uh, rule whether a question is really the relevant to the uh, terms and conditions or the, within the scope of the inquiry. As chairman, I, I also have this question to uh, rule whether a question is a follow question and should be put or not. And uh, the time limit for each member, including response uh, from uh, the winners, is uh, 10 minutes. So, Mr. Y, I want to put the first question to you. Mr. Y, according to G1, provider document G1, provided by the government, uh, you were the Director of Highways from April 2008 and uh, June 26, 2010, and you were Chairman of the Committee to Monitor the XRL. And you have to report to the uh, Direct Secretary for Development, and within the uh, Highways Department, you have a team to assist you. Because of the scope of the XRL, the government also engaged uh, a consultant, a review consultant, to regularly a monitor and verification uh, cons consultant to uh, help you to monitor the work of XRL. Please uh, briefly describe your participation in the monitoring of XRL uh, during the period, including the, in respect of the entrustment agreement or before and after the signing of the entrustment agreement uh, on the 26th of January 2010. What's your role within that period? Chairman as Director of Highways, of course, I'm, uh, I was responsible for the planning of uh, railway projects, including XRL project. During my tenure, I participated in the following. In first, discussion with the MTRC on how to take forward the project, including the design, uh, site investigation, the drafting of the uh, entrustment agreement uh, and to uh, provide assistance uh, for the uh, fulfillment of relevant legal procedures. Chairman, as you have mentioned, when the MTRC carried out the design and the uh, site investigation, we uh, engaged that uh, verification monitoring and verification consultant. We also uh, carry out study with the mainland on uh, the different modes uh, that can be used for the XRL, for example, whether there are uh, feasible options for the co-location of boundary control facilities. Before I left, uh, the MTLC had just started the XRL project. And, um, Chairman, you mentioned the monitoring mechanism. I uh, I was involved in two monitoring committees. There, uh, before I left, uh, four, there were four meetings uh, with the project supervision committee. So that's uh, my, my uh, a brief description of my participation in respect of the XRL project. Mr. Y, uh, this XRL project uh, is massive. In August, when you set the target dates of uh, commissioning, i.e., uh, August 2015, was th had there been any independent assessment by the government that this would be uh, feasible? I ask this question because uh, from the, uh, inter the experts' committee's report uh, com uh, appointed by the CE. Uh, the report says that uh, you were too optimistic at that time. Do you agree? Uh, according to the information we had back then, we thought that, that the timetable was justified and reasonable. Maybe I can uh, also give you some background information at the time. In 2004, the State Council approved the first uh, medium-term and long-term railway development program. The mainland would like to uh, build uh, 12,000 kilometers of dedicated railway. 
and the statement also make a, an adjustment to the development plan for passenger trade of uh, network of uh, 12,000 kilometers. Uh, the uh, length uh, was increased to 16,000 kilometer km. And uh, the timetable was to uh, complete uh, all the lines in 2015-2016. Uh, We're talking about four horizontal lines and four vertical lines. That's why uh, we had this uh, broad brush uh, com uh, completion target of 2016-2015. Uh, and we were, we then plan a regional express line on that basis. In our uh, railway development strategy 2000, uh, the, this document, we proposed this uh, regional express line, hoping that uh, uh, the the work could commence at the end of 2009 to be completed in January 2015. So uh, this was subsequently called the uh, Hong Kong section of XRL. This is this was to tie with the mainland railway program, and then uh, after the uh, amalgamation of two railway companies, the uh, MTR uh, reviewed the project and uh, come up, came up with uh, some uh, revisions, and uh, the uh, completion date uh, was deferred from January to June 2015, and the uh, government also engaged a an independent consultant to assess whether the timetable was achievable. According to the co uh, consultant, uh, the timetable was tight but achievable. When we signed or draft, when we drafted the entrustment agreement with the MTRC in the finalized uh, version, so the completion date was still put as June 2015, but the funding uh, was delayed for six weeks, but we did not ask the MTRC to keep the June 2015 date. We asked, we allowed them to defer that. So the uh, in the EA, the completion date was put at uh, August 2015. Uh, at that time, we wanted to tie in with the mainland program. And the timetable of of uh, completing the XRL in August 2015 uh, was reasonable. As f for wh whether it would be uh, reasonable to do that, we c we c we can uh, refer to the uh, tender prices. We tendered 11 contracts for 11 contracts. According to uh, highways department colleagues, in the tendering. Exercise, no contractor uh, said that uh, the uh, timetable could not be achieved or asked for uh, the completion date to be deferred. Usually, when the timed cons uh, construction timetable uh, was tight, uh, the uh, contractor would say so because uh, they would need to uh, put in more resources. According to the, high to the highways department, Actually, the current director of highways uh, has said this. Uh, that w there was a big contingency fee provided in the contract. And that is to say, the contractor, after doing their own independent assessment, were of the view that uh, the construction could be completed in time within the budget allowed. So according to such information, I would say that at that time, the, the uh, setting of the completion day uh, was justified and uh, reasonable. I put this to you and see if you agree with me. The uh, target date of August 2015 was achievable, was feasible. We all know now that it is not uh, achievable. And you are saying that this is due to other factors rather than uh, the, uh, whether what, that uh, you you said uh, a completion date that was earlier than ex uh, reasonable. Well, from what I said just now, a small number of contracts have been tendered, and as to why, as things pan out, there is a delay and there is a cost overrun. Well, I have little information. But from what I have, I think that uh, the delay so f uh, as at now and the pro project overrun, the cost overrun may not have done with um, the setting of target. Well, you mean that is something to do with other factors? Yes, that's from what the information I have gathered. 
Mr. Lo Wai Kwok. The XRL delay has been looked into by an independent panel. A report was released. The independent expert panel uh, report states that at the beginning of the implementation of the project, there was uh, no document about the, the um, implementation of the project, set, setting out clearly the roles of uh, the government departments, and there is uh, no clear delineation of the structure and no clear indicators of uh, performance to benchmark the um, for benchmarking. And it also points out that the baseline of the Hong Kong section was unrealistic. The panel thinks that if at the beginning of uh, the project schedule and they had set down the uh, realistic prog program, then they would realize that having it completed in August 2015 would be unrealistic. And there was also a suggestion that, well, uh, according to the independent committee, well, the project was affect affected is not because of um, errors or omissions of management, because it's because of uh, an insufficient uh, buffer time. If there had been sufficient buffer time, then they would have catered for unforeseen circumstances. Mr. Walder, in um, April 2008 uh, to um, April 2000. Uh, 2010. Well, uh, well, Mr. Wai uh, from April 2008 and uh, June 2010 was the director for highways, and he was also um, involved in deciding the approach and um, the project. I don't know. Mr. How Mr. Y would answer, and I'd like to say that an important point of the agreement is the date of completion. Mr. Y was the then director for highways. He is the most qualified person in the government team to decide whether the target set was reasonable. And how likely it could be achieved. And uh, how much leeway they have to um, recover the time uh, lost to achieve this um, rather infeasible target, Mr. White. Well, I have uh, clearly explained about the reasons why we set that completion. Uh, from um, November 2009 to August 2011, there are about 70 months. Apart uh, from uh, the assessment of an independent consultant and our team from the highways department, we all think that we had sufficient time. And my view is that we should not just keep our eyes on the completion date, and uh, but also the individual um, individual parts as well. There are about um, over forty contracts with different completion date. But as I said that before I left the post, uh, there were only eleven contracts tendered. And as to whether there were. Um, delayed commencement time of individual contracts, I don't know. So as I said that uh, we should not just look at the completion date, we should also look at the commencement date. If there was a delay in commencement and there was no adjustment, then there would be less time as buffer. And about um, monitoring of performance. The monitoring and verification mechanism of the MTRCL has been detailed before, but I'd like to say that it generally covers four parts. Firstly, internally there is a four-tier mechanism. One, uh, there is 
a contract review meeting targeting uh, issues related to contracts. Above that, there is the project coordination meeting. Apart from uh, focusing on individual contracts, it also looks at um, coordination amongst different contracts. Above that, uh, there is the project supervision commission uh, chaired by the director. It oversees all the um, major issues, and above that, there is a report to the secretary of the bureau. And that is the internal system within the government. We invite the MCRCL to provide information to enable us to monitor the project. The second part is our involvement in the MTRCL system. In the uh, cost control and uh, project report and also um, project control and also the, um, those related to contract, we have involvement in that. And another part is that we had an independent consultant to give us an independent view. The last part is site supervision, um, site inspection. So we have a very comprehensive and closely knitted mechanism in place to monitor work progress. The system itself is is uh, inflexible. But we have people there who are flexible to make the best of the system and to find solutions where there were problems. I fully agree with you. Yes, the system is, inf is inflexible, but um, people are flexible. When it comes to engaging a consultant to help you with monitoring, I have some questions to ask. The Railway Development Office was, well, in uh, 2008, at the beginning, engaged a Lloyd's uh, registered rail to oversee the relevant uh, monitoring mechanism. Lloyd's, in relation to the design and construction of the Hong Kong section, suggested a monitoring and verification approach to monitor the, the progress. As a monitoring and verification party, you have to decide how to um, adopt Lloyd's recommendation. And when you decide to engage Lloyd's and not Lloyd's recommendation and uh, not other approach. How how did you arrive at this decision? The engagement of Lloyd was a result of uh, established procedures. We have a pro procurement um, uh, department, and uh, it was endorsed by the Development Bureau. We invite eligible consultants uh, to put in tenders and then we uh, score their proposals and submit the same to um, the relevant um, vetting panel for decision. This, is, this was the uh, procedure adopted. Lloyds is an expert in railway projects. We realized that Lloyd has rich experience in uh, railway projects, and in the end, they were appointed. I would like to ask, this monitoring and verification, use an approach of a risk-based sampling approach to see if um, the program has been adhered to and uh, whether it's within the budget. So it's sampling and a verification. Would there be any loopholes? And I'd like to ask Mr. Y to elaborate. 
During the monitoring process, there were three important parties, the Highways Department, the Verification Consultant, and the MTRCL. In the process, what uh, what was at the uh, cooperation relationship and their respective roles? Would it be the case that there were too many parties and in the end nothing was done? Mr. Y, I explained in detail just now the four parts of the monitor and verification process. We obtain information from the independent consultant and we can check it against those we obtain from other parts. We asked the MTRCL to be uh, project management. We won't set up another team of the same size to check the MTRCL. We take samples and we use the risk-based sampling approach. How is it? How was it done? Well, there were about forty or so contracts, and in each contract there would be sampling. And in significant contracts, uh, the frequency of sampling would be higher. The key process uh, in the key process of uh, significant projects, uh, there will be even higher sampling frequency. Mr. Lowe mentioned about uh, division of labor and delineation of uh, duties and powers. That is very important because if there was no clear delineation, the uh, implementation of the project would not be smooth. MTRCL clearly was responsible for project management. The highways department or the government would be would play the role of monitoring and verification as is as explained in the paper. We were not project management and the independent consultant would give us uh, independent views. I have no further question for now. Let me follow up. Uh, you said that uh, we should not just look at the completion date but the commencement date as well. But that was also within the control of um, the person of the project team, if that is the case, if you said that you, we would have to take into account commencement date, then completion date would be completely meaningless. Isn't that right, Mr. Y? I would like to emphasize that when I uh, left the, the post, um, well, some of the contracts have just been tendered and the work has, had just started. As to the rest of the work, I, had no, I have no information. I said that um, if a commencement date and a completion date have been set for an individual contract, and if for some reasons the commencement date had to be delayed and without adjusting the completion date, there can be two alternatives. We asked the contra contractor to be aware that they ha they would have a shorter time and they had to put in more resources, and the second alternative is to adjust the completion date. So if we want to look into the reasons for delay, I suggest that we had to take into account these factors. Mr. Tony Zhe. Mr. Y in his statement said more than, on more than one occasion that the EA2 the MTRCL shall use its best endeavors to complete the adjustment activities in accordance with the entrustment program subject to adjustment under justifiable situation and to minimize as any delay or other effect which any modifications may have on the entrustment program. And in paragraphs 7 to 10, Mr. Y also mentioned that uh, in 2010 January, the project started and it lasts and all the way to till uh, June about over a period of five months it was found that uh, for some contracts there were some there was some delay and the overall um, delay was about a 1.3 percent. And the program progress was 1.7%, so there was a delay. 
Mr. Y, who was the former director for highways, think that the MTR in implementing the Hong Kong section project. And given the fact that there was delayed at the beginning of the project, would he think that the NTRCL had used its best endeavors as uh, stated in the EA? And I'd like to ask for his uh, for the reasons for his belief. In the five month period referred to, as I said, now, there were four meetings of the supervision project supervision committee. I didn't chair the first one. I chaired the second and third meeting. In June, uh, when the, the June meeting was convened, I, already, I had already left the post. So I didn't chair that meeting. From my personal assessment, uh, the MTLCL did uh, use its best endeavors to implement the project. According to my experience, uh, in the initial stage of a big uh, project, you have to uh, assemble a team, and the team has would just uh, start to work together. And very often, there will be a, sl a slight delay in the beginning. Uh, according to the port paper, the uh, plan's uh, progress was uh, one point seven percent, and the progress was one point three percent. Uh, the uh, delay was not serious, and they would be able to catch up during the remaining part of the uh, project. Chairman, Mr. Y said that during that period, the MTLCL, in in his view, uh, did uh, its best. On what basis uh, did you come to that conclusion? First of all, we had uh, eleven. Contracts that uh, they were all awarded in good time, and in the assessment process, uh, we I was of the uh, we were of the view that the uh, MTRCL team that did the assessment uh, with the right uh, expertise. To many people, chairman, best endeavors is a term. That uh, give people that uh, give rise to questions of uh, definition. It gives people the impression that it's difficult, that uh, a lot of efforts uh, will be needed, and therefore the the timetable would not be uh, feasible. As I've said, whether the uh, timetable was feasible, I. Have already explained uh, my view. Uh, we uh, adopted this uh, entrustment agreement approach because it's uh, the, the term used in the operation agreement with the MTLCL. But the, in terms of the nature of the uh, EA, it's similar with other consultancy contract, where when we engage our consultants to carry out major projects for us, may Basically, we ask our consultant to use his best endeavors to act in a bona fide manner and complete the project in good time. And if they commit mistakes, so that a certain item, certain parts of the project have to be re redone or re executed, and then it will be at the cost of the consultant. Of course, if uh, their mistake also cause uh, damages uh, to the government, uh, we reserve the right to, to to make a claim. In this CA and other consultancy agreement, we uh, would adopt the same approach. As I said, this is a very big project. So for this particular project, we have a, a built in a full part of monitoring mechanism. Mr. Y, uh, on this question of best endeavors, your conclusion was that the MTRCL did its best. Uh, were there objective factors that you can share with us, or can you say that uh, on the basis of those objective factors, Mr. Y has come to the uh, 
conclusion that uh, the uh, MTRC uh, had used his best endeavors. As I said, Chairman, when I left the post in 2010, only 11 contracts uh, have been awarded. My assessment was confined to the situation with the 11 contracts, and that is in relation to the performance of MTRCL in relation to those contracts. It seems that uh, Deputy Chairman is now asking me to uh, come to an, an assessment of the perf overall performance of the MTRCL. Mr. Y, up to June 2010, although there was a delay, uh, the uh, plan progress was 1.7 percent, and only 1.3 percent was achieved. And uh, in the initial stage, uh, the percentage of uh, completion or progress should be assessed. You said uh, the MTRC had used its best endeavors. Did did you base that? on uh, any objective factors. I said that the uh, MTRC used its best endeavors to manage the project. In October 2007, this, the CE announced the XRL project as um, one of the 10 major infrastructure projects. And up to the point I left my post, uh, we were in cooperation with MTRCL. We did a lot. Uh, we uh, uh, come up with the EA. We uh, carry. We asked the MTRC to carry out the site investigation, and then there was uh, the, the second EA. Uh, at, I was of the view that the MTRC uh, used its best endeavors to uh, take implement the project. Mr. Y, with your expertise and knowledge, uh, the XRL had just uh, started for five months, and then uh, the progress was behind schedule. There was a delay. You might think that it was not a serious delay, and it was acceptable. At that time, uh, were you not concerned, that, or did you have any doubts that the delay would further uh, deteriorate? And as a result, uh, that would be impossible to catch up later. Chairman, uh, the difference is uh, zero point something percentage points for a big project. It's not a serious slippage. There will be ample time in that in the latter part of the uh, contract period, uh, things can be recovered. Progress can be recovered. At that point, MDLCL also proposed some measures to catch up. And we had also to make reference to other cross-boundary projects. And there was some discussion with the mainland authorities by the SAL government. And we were of the view that uh, catching up would be possible later. Chairman, according to paragraph 15 of the Mr. Y's statement, the uh, Director of Highways updates uh, the Secretary for Transport and Housing on the project progress or any significant issues relating to the implementation of the XRL. From time to time, the Highways Department uh, and the MTRCL are requested to provide briefings to the uh, Transport and Housing Bureau on major issues relating to the project. So, Mr. Y. What do you mean by uh, significant issues or major issues? When you were the director of highways, did you report to the then Secretary for Transport and Housing, Ms. Eva Chang, on uh, significant issues relating to the implementation of the XRL? Uh, when it comes to significant issues or major issues, we're not talking about specific issues uh, of uh, individual contracts. I have uh, mentioned the four-part monitoring mechanism. I was uh, I I chair the uh, project supervision uh, committee, and uh, the bureau was represented 
and uh, we would uh, discuss whether we should make a report to the secretary at the PSC. And if we wanted to make a report to the secretary, we would uh, do this in a regular meeting of the PSC. According to what you can remember, did you at that time make any report to the secretary on uh, significant issues? Uh, I don't have any information uh, with me. I have to check. What about your memory? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, according to my memory, yes, uh, we did report progress to the secretary. For significant issues, uh, you would report to the secretary. And apart from reporting to the secretary, if there are Im significant issues, generally uh, speaking, as chairman, as director of highways, which, which chairs the uh, PSC, uh, would you also take the initiative to ask your colleagues in the department to follow up on such significant issues? If that's the case, usually who will be following up those issues with you in your department? We we'll certainly uh, take the initiative to follow up matters. We have set up a team for XRL. The, the team and I would uh, would act uh, proactively to follow up significant issues relating to XRL. Uh, maybe we can ask Mr. Y to check uh, his records on uh, such significant issues and provide the information to the select committee for information. Can you check uh, what uh, significant issues uh, were covered in your reporting? To the secretary and give us the information. Can you do that? Yes. Although we yes certainly, but uh, although we use the term significant issues, we don't categorize issues as such. We would report uh, issues to the secretary as an as con as deemed uh, appropriate. Mr. Wu Chihui, according to the uh, expert panel meeting. Expert panel report, rather. In a paragraph 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, uh, there is relevant background information. The, XR, the MTRCL was of the view that the contingency allowed was not sufficient, was inadequate, and therefore. The MTRC said uh, uh, provision, uh, additional funding might be needed from the government at a later stage. In the second EA, EA2, there's another third party consult, a team of third party consultants saying that uh, the uh, completion date of uh, 4th of August 2015, the, uh, the program would be extremely tight. And uh, there will be the the need of unusually high rates of output uh, to 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 make it. According to uh, external information available uh, to the MTLCL, uh, over a route in 2009, then uh, they said that the construction resources are no longer available. Uh, in the same quantities as was the case during the last major expansion of infrastructure that took place. So uh, they they mentioned the uh, shortage of uh, construction workers. So concerning these uh, technical background information, Mr. Y. Uh, was you aware of the uh, different pieces of information that I've referred to in the expert report? And if so, did you inform Ms. Eva Jiang, the then Secretary for Transport and Housing, and uh, warn her that uh, according to the EA2, according to the uh, uh, original completion date, and according to the original programming and budget, uh, there are, there were such uh, risk factors involved. Uh, were you aware of uh, such information at that time? 
and if not, if you you were not aware of that, then of course, uh, as the uh, the head of a technical department, well, uh, how how did you assess the situation in the tray at that time, um. Mr. Y? Well, about the um, expert uh, panel report, I was not part of it, and uh, my view wa was not sought. I cannot comment on the information in the report. All I could say, all I can say, was the information I had when I was director. When it comes to the uh, project period, and I've explained that from different perspectives, um, the dates set are supported by. Justifications and grounds, and as I've said previously, after all contracts have been awarded, the total project cost and our um, budget, the difference will be the contingency fees. And after we have av awarded uh, the project cost, uh, there is still a a substantial amount of contingency fees. That means that uh, the um, judgment at that time was that there should be sufficient contingency fees. And as to why there is project over a uh, cost overrun, as I've said that I had little information, but when I was director. There were sufficient uh, contingency fees, and in 2008 and 9, the CIC conducted a manpower survey. From the information gathered, I found that, overall speaking, there were enough man um, manpower, uh, enough headcounts, but for certain trades, they might be a shortage. That's why over the years, the CIC endeavoured to train enough workers and as I'm sure you have seen that the government has also done a lot in terms of uh, import of uh, foreign labor. Mr. Y, in other words, you were not aware that the you were not aware how the MTRCL award the contracts. You could only make a decision or judgment based on the information you had, Mr. Y. At that time, the MTRCL gave us information uh, saying that um, that the schedule was a bit tight. But in the end, after discussion, we agree to adopt the completion date in the EA. Well, there is uh, an area of uh, great controversy in the EA. If the MTRCL can not perform in accordance with the agreement, would the uh, compensation they had to pay cap be capped? So, according to your understanding, Mr. Y. The risk that the MTR would be held liable because of a delay or um, or breach would it be kept? I know that in this regard uh, there w there is some ongoing discussion, so I'm afraid I cannot comment. Let me put it this way: in your understanding, well, because you were the one who provided support in the formulation of the EA, uh, the uh, entrustment agreement. So according to your understanding, when it comes to the maximum amount of compensation to be paid by the NTRCL as a result of delay, is it ca capped? I know that um, the Secretariat is having a discussion about how this should be discussed, so I'm afraid I cannot comment on it. I would like to ask some other questions. Sorry.
in the monitoring of the XRL, the, there is the, the approach of check the checker. So I'd like to ask Mr. Y, do you think this approach If the experience in the project management of uh, this kind of project will affect um, the verification and monitoring, Mr. Y, as I said, that the system is inflexible, but people are, and we have identified people who have the experience to form a team. Of course, not everyone, myself included, is uh, omniscient, so omnipotent. So we have engaged an independent consultant to give us an independent um, take on the project. And as I've said, because uh, due to the four areas I have covered, we have a comprehensive view to get to gather all the information available. So even with a lack of experience, the system will enable that there was sufficient information provided to the government or the bureau. Is that right? Yes, that's the design of the system. As I explained, there are four parts because from the information collected from the four parts, they would complement um, one another and we could check the information against, against one another so that we will uh, be fully on top of uh, everything. Well, there's a question asked in the um, panel report. The relevant monitoring and verification team was not alert enough to alert the um, THB about the delay. So in the design of the mechanism, such delays or slippage would not be covered were not covered by um, an alert um, mechanism as in order to inform the, say, the PS or the Secretary of the Bureau. I don't understand your question. According to the expert panel report, the supervision team of the Highways Department did not do any work to alert possible delay. According to the independent expert panel, they, well, it may have an implication on cost. And last time in the last hearing, Mr. Lai said that, um, well, when he, he had to rely on the expert and professionals in the highways department to give them to give him professional opinion and when there was a delay and when there might be cost overrun should shouldn't the supervision team alert the pers permanent secretary or the THB so that they uh, would know about it I left in June 2010. I cannot comment on the uh, on the approach of the incumbent director or, or, or colleagues. And as I said, there are four areas. In the third part, that is the PSC chaired by the director, there were representatives of different departments and in the dis in discussions if we identify technical issues and if we if they are deemed to be important enough to uh, be related to the secretary then it would do so if we could flexibly use the system uh, what mr. Wu mentioned would not happen So if there is any alert system, it would have been built in the third tier, right? If that is the case, it would be in the first tier. And in fact, every tier in the project, in the contract review meeting, if there were problems with the contract, then uh, the issues will be related to the project coordination meeting. And if it's serious enough, then it would be elevated. 
So the people involved in every tier、uh, would be minded to alert the tier above if necessary. So you rely on the judgment of a person. There was there were no guidelines or documents to follow. Of course, we have to rely on people, and it's because of this reason we have professional engineers. And as I've said, the judgment was based on the information submitted by the MTARC in the system, and there were also government officials in the MTR. C system, and we have and we also obtained independent、um, views, and there were site inspections, and、uh, judgment will be made as to whether there would be problems. So in this system, there was no、uh, regular mechanism, say for example, sampling, to ensure. That the information supplied was accurate and clear. So in the end, it's for the expert or professionals to make a judgment. So and there was no random checking.、Uh, please be brief, Mr. Y. As I've explained. That the independent consultant would take samples to check the information, and I've said many times that in different parts there was information supplied. The information was just what is set out, and、uh, we could not solely rely on something that is、uh, inf inflexible、uh, to make our judgment. Mr. Y, I have a follow-up question. You chair the PSC. Yes,、uh, there was a Jacobs China Limited. That is the monitoring and verification consultant who would do the monitoring and verification work. But as far as I know, at the beginning, when you were the chairman of the PSC, Jacobs was not involved. And now that I heard that Jacobs take. Uh, takes part in the PSC, but not at that time. Why not? From my recollection, the second monitoring and verification consultant was not yet engaged, but the process has started. Please repeat. Before I left the office, now、uh, they have started the process to、uh, to engage the second monitoring and verification consultant. So they only started the work after I've left. So did they participate? No, not in the meetings I chaired. Why not? Because we've only started the uh, uh, recruitment process. So when they've actually started their work, you have already left. Yes. So a simple question: the design should make Jacobs、um, and、uh, its official member of the PSC. I can't remember whether they were the P,、uh, were an uh, ex official uh, member. If there was a need to change the membership, a decision would have to be made after taking into account the situation. Then, at the beginning, you didn't think that、uh, there should be the involvement of Jacobs. Well, at that time, Jacobs was not yet、um, retained. We've only started、um, the rep、uh, the appointment process, but the design of the PSC did not include、uh, the consultant. I cannot say that it did, it wasn't included because the consultant was not engaged at that time. Got way, Mr. Gary Fan. Thank you, Chairman.、Uh, I. I Don't understand why I'm the six because I once I sat down I raised my hand. With regard to the written statement given by Mr. Y, I'm disappointed because、uh, he's just、uh, repeating what the current、uh, director of highways, Mr. Lau Ka Kung, statement. 
when he was uh, director of highways, uh, he was responsible for XRL. He played down what he did, and he also tried to share responsibility of the government uh, of the judgment errors before the uh, start of XRL. The supervision was inadequate, and therefore MTLCL uh, caused the slippage because of uh, poor performance and the delay was caused. As a senior AO, Mr. Y shouldn't have soon forget that uh, in 2014 uh, there were reports in Ming Pao and Apple Daily's uh, free report on uh, the delay in West Kowloon, and that is uh, the uh, Guang investigation report in 1997 uh, for Austin statement, and also in October in uh, September to 2009 the MTLC site investigation. Pro Report and also when the uh, MTLCL uh, resumed the uh, golf uh, range and also the PTI in 2010 in West Kowloon, all three reports clearly point points out that before the XRL project started in 2010, uh, that is during the term of Mr. White, uh, uh, it was well known that there were a, a lot of rock underneath uh, West Kowloon. And uh, in uh, May 2014, when we had a debate on whether to invoke our powers and privileges in this council, uh, Mr. Anthony Jiang said that the uh, geological reports uh, were already incorporated in Contract 810A for Western West Kowloon Terminus, but the MTLC uh, keeps saying that uh, the uh, rock. Uh, Problem has caused the delay. As chairman of the PSC, Mr. Y, can you confirm to this select committee that before you left your the post, the government and the MTLC were aware of the geological reports and were were aware of the uh, rock layers underneath a West Kowloon uh, station, Mr. Y, for the 1997 report. It was done for the uh, regional express night. It was done by KCRC. It cover areas uh, along the alignment of the uh, regional express night. The 2009 report was. I don't want to interrupt because I have many questions. I have a series of questions. I don't think uh, the members should. Interrupt. I asked Mr. Y whether he was aware of those reports. I wasn't asking Mr. Y to repeat what's in those reports. Well, I think uh, you should allow the witness to answer the questions. If he uh, digress or not up to not to the point, I'll ask you ask him to supplement. At the 2009. Uh, Report did not cover the golf practice uh, grounds because uh, the operator wanted to extend the uh, the time allowed for them as far as, far as possible. So it was uh, extended to up to December 2009. And once the uh, uh, golf uh, practice ground was uh, surrendered, the MTLCL started the investigation ground investigation immediately. When I left. It was not yet completed. It was only completed after I had left the post. When I was director, I was aware that under the that station, uh, there's a large quantity of rock. Although the exact uh, amount, the uh, exact quantity was not known. So if uh, the government and the MTLCL were aware of the uh, geological conditions, although not uh, to the full extent, so when uh, Mr. White left the post of Director of Highways, uh, the third report uh, covering the golf practice grounds uh, was also covered. Did the uh, MTLCL, when it devised the uh, budget and uh, timetable, Mentioned to the government that there will be difficulties in removing the rocks underneath the uh, station site, and that uh, they, to them, they may 
they had worries or they might think that it would be difficult to achieve the completion date of uh, 2015. And when uh, the government set the commission, commissioning date of XRL as 2015, did you consider the fact that there are a lot of uh, utilities, uh, uh, pipes, and, uh, and underground facilities, uh, and, and therefore there will be some difficulties? Uh, yes, we did. The XRL the station uh, will be a, a big underground station. And there will be underground utilities, and there will be rock uh, problems relating to the rock layer. We didn't think that uh, the presence of rock layer is a big problem. We have to deal with it uh, in many major infrastructure projects uh, as long as the contractor uh, adopts the right method. I asked did the MTRCL to express the same understanding. And did they think that they would be able to cope or their contractor would also be able to cope? Did you factor in this uh, rock problem? I cannot give an answer according to memory whether the, they mentioned uh, rock or not directly. As I said, uh, this is a complex uh, project. Rock is just uh, one of the many problems. And during the construction, uh, period, all such factors will be taken into account. Well, so Mr. Wise says this is a complex uh, problem. Can, maybe he needs to check and give us the answer and data. And that is, uh, did MTRCL mention the, the, the rock layer problem? And then also whether in uh, devising the budget and the timetable, was special consideration to pay to this factor, Mr. Wise? If you have papers, and if you can uh, answer this question, please check the papers. I need to check the papers to see if the, the information is available. My third question is this. Mr. Y, do you think now that the MTRC uh, played down the uh, importance or the did not pay sufficient attention to this rock problem leading to the current uh, delay. Would you regard that if they did, uh, it didn't, they didn't pay attention, sufficient attention to this problem, were they uh, negligent? Well, A10A was a uh, side after I had left the post. The MTRCL did uh, include information of uh, rock in the tendering document uh, if, and uh, remind the contractors of this fact. In that case, I don't think the MTRCL was negligent in this regard. Well, Mr. Y ha has been saying that uh, monitoring mechanism is inflexible, but people are flexible. He said that at the time the RDO did not. Uh, It said that it did not make sufficient preparation for the uh, M and V consultant. Uh, there was no over overall uh, implementation document so as to carefully document uh, the roles of the uh, THB, the highways department, and the MTLCL. In the second agreement, uh, there was nothing to control budget uh, or the progress and achievement of the target days, and there were no quant quantif quantity indicators so that the highways department, although the, was aware of the slippage, uh, did not have any specified uh, specify role to intervene. So the, did you uh, trust the MTRCL too much based on the past experience uh, so that you uh, did not uh, put in sufficient details? For the second agreement, uh, the highways department was uh, allowed to appoint independent consultants, and uh, that is uh, the Jacobs China Limited, referred to by the uh, chairman. When the independent consultants thought that uh, there was a problem with the progress, and also uh, if there was a slippage of 11 months, the uh, independent uh, Consultant's input was not taken on board, and you could you could only rely on the promise 
by the MTRC that it would be completed in uh, time. No, there was no monitoring, and the people um, didn't do anything to monitor the progress. So my criticism is that uh, what is this not a poor supervision? If is it not poor supervision? You can reserve your own comments. Well, I don't think I don't, can't understand why there was no adequate monitoring. I talk about the four-part monitoring mechanism. Each part plays a role. Our independent consultant uh, was engaged uh, in the MTRC uh, system. Our consultants, uh, our team were also able to get the information they needed. I uh, uh, other members uh, ask questions uh, up to thirteen minutes. Well, you are not with our internal meeting. Well, we ask uh, we we give members a little bit more time in the first round. All right, I'll, I'll uh, wait for the second term, Miss Claudia Mo. I'm really disappointed with the written statement of Mr. Wai Chi Seng. It seems to suggest that nothing particular happened. It's just a chronology and uh, nothing more. Mr. Wai said earlier that during his term, uh, so many, that number of, uh, a number of uh, contracts uh, were awarded. It gives uh, people the impression that you only monitor what's before you. But you're also the chairman of the PSC. Now looking back, would you agree that it's really a situation whereby the system was inflexible, but the people should be flexible? It may not be a personal problem of yours, but those people in the monitoring mechanism might be uh, did not. Uh, have uh, broad perspectives, and they would just uh, look at individual contracts and award them and uh, assess the contracts uh, individually only. That's my first question. Do you agree, Chairman? I I do not agree that we just handle whatever comes our way. If that's the case, there would be no need to devise a uh, very a stringent. Monitoring mechanism for the project, but then you are contradicting yourself, Mr. Y. You have stressed that the system was inflexible, but people should be flexible. But uh, the facts remains that uh, we have a big problem with how the XRL project has been monitored, and therefore this hearing. Now, with hindsight, uh, looking back, uh, what could have you been, what could have been done to make it better by the uh, Highways department and uh, by the uh, system back then, should there be should there have been more meetings or should they have should the people have uh, adopted a broader perspective? You have stressed that before and after you had left, there was problem with uh, rocks underneath the station, and you you said it was common. Well, it's not just about rocks; it's difficult. To brass open is a massive brassing operation. You use the word complex. And uh, that factor could have uh, caused delay and slippage. When asked whether uh, the MTRC out a factor into the rock problem in the uh, timetable or the budget. You said uh, you are not, you are not sure. You have to check and give us the information later. I thought this is problematic. What's the problem? Why did that situation uh, arise? You admitted that there was a problem. Did the MTRC out 
take that factor into account in the estimation of uh, budget of timetable. You said you are not very sure. You have to check the the documents. Uh, that's not acceptable. What's your answer? I'd like to clarify one thing. Uh, I myself and the MTRCL knew about the rock stratum and they and that has to be has been taken into account and as to um well um the um the MTRCL mentioned about this I have to go back and uh, look into the relevant information. Well we have taken into account a number of factors, not just about the rock stratum before we decide the completion date. So you still have to go back to take up the information to find out if MTRCL had told you about removal of rocks and included it in the um, in the program and in uh, in the budget when you were in office. I think what the what Mr. White was trying to say was that uh, he doesn't want to just rely on his memory. Mr. Y, I'd like to clarify that we have incorporated the factor of rock into the project program, but as to your the particular question about whether the MTR CL mentioned the rock stratum being an intractable problem, I cannot answer you off the top of my head. That's my question. Well, the government has taken that into account, that is uh, the rock stratum. And as to whether the MTRCL has in included it into their work uh, schedule and budget, well, he, Mr. Y ha has to go back to find the information first. Sorry, let me clarify. The MTRCL has also included it into the budget. But as to members' question, as to whether the MTRCL mentioning the rock stratum as an intractable problem, I have to find the information. Well, I think it was about the program schedule, not cost. Mr. Y said that the geological um, problems of the W of the West Kowloon terminus has been included by the MTRCL into the budget, but not the po project program. That as well. Then why did you tell me you had to go back to s to look? Well, it's not just uh, the rock. There was the underground utility standard material. They have all been included and considered, and as to whether the MTRCL singled out rock uh, stratum and say and uh, said that uh, it may be a problem that would affect the completion date, I have to find the information. But my question was very clear. Let me ask again. My question has been the same. Mr. Y at first said that he wasn't clear and he had to find the information, and now he said that it was included in the program and the budget. Do you confirm that you, that uh, that is the case? You don't have to look up the information, Mr. Y. MTRCL has done that. Yes. On a number of occasions, you said the MTRCL had to uh, shall use its best endeavors. It's just like uh, in a school when students ha have to uh, use their best endeavors. And you also mentioned about um, reasonable adjustments under justifiable situations. It's actually just um, me, just a, a lot of hot air because if there is a force majeure, then you can argue your case, and in the end, uh, you don't have to be liable. With hindsight, isn't it uh, just uh, superfluous to use these contract terms? Because there's no substance in it, Mr. White. 
We engage the MTRCL to be the project management. And when it comes to adjust justifiable situations and reasonable adjustments, well, if there is a natural disaster, we can't possibly ask the MTRCL to be held responsible when it's out of their control. So if there is a need for reasonable adjustment and is allowed under the EA, of course, you have to cater for natural disasters. Well, it, when, if it rains, it rains. But there must be a plan B to cater for that. It's about preparation. But what we're asking is whether is that there is any human error. My, back to my original question. The f now, thinking back, you are the former director. Could you have done better? And is it because you did not do well? Uh, as a result, there was some kind of a mess in the XRL project, and you have made it mission impossible for your um, successor. Mr. Y, could you have done better looking back? Well, looking back, I don't know what I could have done better in the setting of the completion date and the work then the working out of the program I've already talked about the sufficient contingency fees and I've also designed a comprehensive uh, monitoring system and mechanism so I don't think that because of my of mistakes I made uh, it has made things difficult for the incumbent director no it's not about mistakes made uh, uh, the question was uh, where, whether you could have done better when I was the PS of the Development Bureau I strongly promote the idea of coordination and cooperation. So we use the spirit of cooperation and um, coordination in the terms of the contract. And if we could inject elements of uh, mutual aid and cooperation, then uh, it would be it would have been more effective, Mr. Tenkar Bu. Mr. Y, you left to go to the Development Bureau. You've been in the civil service for a very long time, and now you're in the Development Bureau. I've read an analysis from the Ming Pao. It says that uh, in the Development Bureau, when it comes to dealing with uh, different uh, projects, uh, the approach is different. In the Development Bureau, there will be a, a quantitative uh, surveyor, surveying consultant to oversee quantity surveying to uh, avoid giving a free rein to the contractor, but the THB doesn't have this approach. Mr. Wang, you've been in both bureaus, so is what the Ming Pao said true? Is that one of the reasons why there is a cost overrun of uh, the XRL? When you were the director of the highways, I noticed that uh, whether it's the incumbent director or you, the XRL was is the first project that is run by um, surface concession. You have a railway development office. The highways department is responsible for construction and overseeing of uh, new railway projects. This is the first of its kind. Would you have some uh, new ideas, new designs that is decided um, within the department or with the bureau? So is it your, just your own decision or was there um, a lot of involvement from the bureau? Because it's one of the major projects, 10 major projects. 
I have not read the uh, press report of Ming Pao, and we follow the Development Bureau's uh, technical um, notice. The Treasury, uh, the uh, FSTB, has a procurement guideline which has to be followed, and when it comes to quantity. Uh, surveying consultant is not one of our arrangement, and then when it comes to the service concession, it's not the decision of the department. It's a decision of the CE in council and the bureau. Once a decision uh, is made, well, as you've said, that this is the first of its kind. The entrustment agreement is similar in nature. With the agreement of other consultants, but we have specially designed the four tier monitoring mechanism to ensure smooth implementation of the project. It seems that the monitoring system or mechanism is not effective, even when a problem is identified. It's not enough to alert the MTRCL or the government to act. When you decided to adopt this approach, was there an alternative? Was it the case that you have uh, proposed four options for the Bureau and the CE in Council for them to choose, or you have only made one suggestion, which is this one? So is either take it or leave it. So what was it like? The CE in Council decided to adopt the approach of surface concession. The monitoring mechanism was formulated by the Department and the Bureau. In paragraph 11, we mentioned that we have engaged our consultant Lloyds to review the institutional arrangements of the MTRCL. They made some recommendations, which is the monitoring and verification. Uh, we've considered that and we adopted the approach. So at that time, you only engaged Lloyds, which made this recommendation and it was adopted. You did not work out another monitoring mechanism or, or engage another consultant to work out another approach. You've only engaged Lloyds, which only made one recommendation, and you have fully taken it on board. Well, actually, there were only two alternatives. We used the government system or we used the MTR system. If we use the MTRC system, we had to ensure that there was sufficient monitoring. That's an important point. If the MTRC is to was to use the government system, it may not result in a smooth implementation of the project because the MTRCL was not familiar with our system. The Lloyd's, at Lloyd's having looked into the MTRCL, recommended that the NTRCL system um, should be adopted with the added element of monitoring and verification role. Well, let's have a 15-minute break, and you can continue your questions afterwards. Let's, well, we now have, we, it's now 10.45. We're going to have a 15-minute break, and we'll come back at 11.